So a few months ago, last year, I went to the cinema where I found myself sitting through numerous trailers for upcoming movies, and there was one trailer that really caught my eye. It was for a film with Chris Hemsworth, Kate Blanchett, and uh, even Jeff Goldblum in it. Now to you and most audiences around the world, you know this movie as Thor Ragnarok, the latest movie in the seemingly never-ending Marvel Cinematic Universe. But here in Japan it goes under a completely different name, and one that is far more eye-catching, in my opinion. Because over here, Thor Ragnarok is actually called Mighty Thor Battle Royale. Mighty Thor Battle Royale! Now everybody knows the words Battle Royale makes everything better and uh, when I saw it I was really excited at the time because I thought it was some kind of Japan exclusive but unfortunately it turned out it was just Thor Ragnarok with a different name. It got me thinking what other western films have been rebranded for Japanese audiences and it turns out there are some spectacular examples. So today I wanted to share with you 21 film titles that have been translated for Japanese audiences often with questionable results. I mean looking at these film titles it can often feel like viewing them through an alternate universe or something. Take for example the 2003 movie Anger Management with Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. Anger Management had a much more positive spin on it when it was released in Japan avoiding the word anger altogether and instead calling it New York Style Happy Therapy. New York Style Happy Therapy. I don't know about you, but Happy Therapy to me sounds like some sort of sinister dystopian education program. And that image of Jack Nicholson doesn't do it any favours. The movie Being John Malkovich doesn't come off too well. Uh, Being John Malkovich is a film title that could have probably been translated into Japanese quite easily. And yet instead it was simply retitled as Malkovich's Hole. Malkovich's hole. Uh, I'm not. I'm not too sure what hole is being referred to there, uh, but it certainly conjures up some different imagery to the Western title, doesn't it? The Fast and Furious franchise, in which Vin Diesel drives a car, that has been completely rebranded over here. The Fast Five, for example, is known in Japan as Wild Speed Mega Max. Wild Speed Mega Max. It sounds like a brand of condoms as opposed to a billion dollar franchise, including the sequels Fast and Furious 7, known in Japan as Wild Speed Sky Mission. Still, say what you will about Wild Speed Mega Max, at least they put some degree of effort into rebranding the franchise. Unlike American Pie The Reunion, which they rebranded over here as American Pie Pie Pie. I'm not even joking, that's genuinely the title. And yet, somehow, I suspect more time went into rebranding that title than was spent writing the script of the actual movie itself. Another franchise which was branded to questionable effect was the Final Destination franchise. Now, in the movie Final Destination 3, a lot of people die when a roller coaster falls off the tracks. And the Japanese title of the movie kind of spoils that surprise somewhat because Final Destination 3 over here is known as Final Dead Coaster. Final Dead Coaster. Uh, roller coaster. Dead coaster. I don't know. It seems like someone was trying to think up a clever pun and then they just gave up. The title for Final Destination 5 continues this spoilerific trend. In Final Destination 5, lots of people die when a bridge collapses. And with that piece of information in mind, let's see if you can guess the title to Final Destination 5 in Japan. Final. Dead. Yep, say it out loud now. Yep. Final Dead Bridge. Congratulations, you got it right. Final Dead Bridge. And yet, somehow, it's still not the worst spoilers you'll find in a Western title that's been adapted for Japan. That award goes to one of my favourite James Bond movies, You Only Live Twice, which in Japan is simply called 007 Dies Twice. Yeah, it's not. It's not quite as romantic and mysterious as the original title, is it? Here's another few movies where the adapted titles give away a little bit too much information in order to reel in potential audiences. Uh, Life of Pi is... Life of Pi, 227 days adrift with a tiger. Despicable Me is... Phantom Thief Gru and the Moon Theft. The Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. Very clever turn of phrase. Over here though, it's Spongebob, everyone in the sea saves the world. And the classic Pixar movie, Up, uh, has a bit more of a blunt rendition in Japan, where Up is called Grandpa Carl's Flying House. That said, at least by reading the title, you know kind of what it's about. Unlike the next title, which wins the award for worst translated 
movie ever. Now you might think The Karate Kid is a title that would work well in Japan, right? Especially given that the word karate is a Japanese word. And yet, no. In Japan, The Karate Kid is called Best Kid. Uh, the one title that didn't need to be translated or adapted, and they still did it. Here's a few other titles that probably didn't need it either. The Shawshank Redemption, one of the best titles of the 90s, is Into the Shawshank Sky. And if only Andy Dufresne had been able to ascend into the Shawshank Sky, it would have been a far more pleasant means of escape than crawling through that sewage pipe. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is Green Destiny. Now, fair enough, Green Destiny does have some relevance. It's the name of the sacred sword in the movie, uh, and yet it still lacks some of the poetic punch of the English title. To me, Green Destiny seems less like a martial arts movie and more like a documentary about vegans. But the most unpleasant sounding film adaption has to go to Nine Lives, a movie in which Christopher Walken turns Kevin Spacey into a cat called Mr. Fuzzy Pants, and I'm genuinely not making up that synopsis. Uh, but the Japanese title is quite literally called Men in Cat. Men in Cat sounds like, well, I'm not even gonna go there, to be honest. Still, in my opinion, some of the titles that they've adapted do actually sound better. For example, The Evil Dead, Sam Raimi's 1981 classic is The Ghost's Intestines. Friends with Benefits is Stay Friends which sounds more like life advice than a movie title. Olympus Has Fallen, in which Gerard Butler saves President Harvey Dent, is End of White House. Hot Tub Time Machine is Go By Bath. And Tooth Fairy, a movie in which The Rock becomes, uh, becomes a tooth fairy, is there anything he won't do, it has a much more violent edge, the Japanese version, where it's called The Fairy Fighter. But I've saved my two favourite ones until last. Uh, the first one is Army of Darkness, the third movie in the Evil Dead franchise, in which the protagonist, Ash Williams, ends up in medieval times taking on, well, an army of darkness. But for whatever reason, the artwork and the title seemed too dark for Japanese audiences, and it was retitled as Captain Supermarket taking a violent anti-hero and making him sound like someone who volunteers at warm heart. But shockingly shit title aside, I actually quite like the artwork on this one, the retro kind of artwork. Especially how they managed to fit Bruce Campbell's name, the name of the actor, onto the Campbell's soup tin in the bottom there. But my favourite adapted title ever uh, goes to a movie that I imagine few people watching this video will have seen, even though it's allegedly one of Bill Clinton's favourite comedies. And that is the movie Who's Your Caddy? A movie in which a hip-hop star tries to get into a country club uh, by bribery, basically. That's the plot. Unsurprisingly, the pun Who's Your Caddy doesn't really translate well into Japanese, and so to attract audiences in Japan, instead of Who's Your Caddy, they retitled it as We Are Hip Hop Gold Golfers. We are hip hop golfers. Imagine being in a situation where you could legitimately use that phrase. Uh, but between the title, We Are Hip Hop Golfers, and the artwork, that is my favourite title. So there you have it, 21 titles that have been readapted for Japanese audiences. But which one's your favourite? Let us know in the comment section below. And a huge shout out to my good friend Haruka, who helped me compile this list. He spent the last year tweeting out these titles. I think there's over 150 now, and uh, they're a joy to behold every week. So if you want to check them out, follow him on Twitter. And he's also got a really awesome underrated YouTube channel called Bomb Arrow, which has a lot of Japan-based content as well as skits and parody videos with the kind of videos I often dream of making but lack the After Effects skills to actually pull off myself. You can check out his videos such as When Gamers Play Russian Roulette or Using Doctor Strange's Magic at his channel in the description box below. But uh, for now, guys, as always, many thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm off now to get some New York style happy therapy, or as I like to call it, a hamburger.